Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students so in the previous class we started with um, the integ integral aspects of uh, vector calculus and we started with um, uh, line integral actually so um, i left off the pre previous uh, lecture at a very interesting example in my opinion actually so uh, today we will continue with the similar example so we were given um, uh, a vector function and we had to find out the line integral of this uh, vector function f um, along this rectangle so we have assumed that the orientation is in this way so oa ab and then uh, co or uh, yes co so now uh, let me write these points a0 and then this is ab and then this is b0 all right so now on uh, oa so on oa y is varying uh, Base, uh, sorry x is varying but y is 0 because the equation of the line o, uh, of the x axis is y equals to 0. So, on o a x is uh, on o a our uh, y is sorry uh, our y is 0 our y is 0 and therefore, d y is 0 and uh, x varies from and x varies from 0 to a right so 0 to a so 0 to a that's how x is varying now on a b our x is a and therefore dx is 0 because x is constant so dx is 0 and y um, varies from 0 to b right okay now on b c uh, on B C we have uh, we have y equals to B and therefore d y will be 0 and uh, x varies from a to x varies from a to 0 and uh, on C O uh, our C O x is 0. So, basically d x is 0 and uh, y varies from b to 0 right. So, basically we have 4 smooth curves uh, so, and uh, along all these 4 curves we have these 4 criteria. So, now instead of calculating the line integral of the vector function f along this curve c. So, along this curve c the line integral along the curve c 1 dot d r plus c2 dot dr c3 f dot dr plus c4 f dot dr will be same because our curve c is actually the union of c1 c2 c3 c4 so here we can write union of c1 c2 c3 c4 and from some of the properties from integral calculus or riemann integral uh, this union can be transferred into a summation so it can be changed into a summation so basically integral over the union of the domains is equals to the sum of the sub integrals over each of these domains all right so that's what we are doing here so integral over c1 c2 c3 c4 if you sum them then that will be the integral over the curve c so that is the formula which we have used here and uh, we can call this line as our curve c1 we can call this line as our curve c2 we can call this line as our curve c3 and we can call this line as our curve c4 and we have to now evaluate these integrals separately so what is the value of the integral along c1 so c1 f dot dr so c1 c1 is where y is let me go back so on c1 x is varying from 0 to a so, on C1 x is varying from 0 to a and our f is given by this equation. Now, on C1 y is 0, so dy is 0. So, when y is 0, this is 0 and uh, when y is 0, so this term is 0. So, we basically have x square i. So, we basically have x square i plus 0 times j and dr can be written as dx i plus dy j. 
now dyj uh, d, d, dy is basically 0 because y is 0 so dy is 0 so we are ultimately left with i times dx so here we have dx times i plus 0 times j d all right and now if we take the dot product then this is basically x running from 0 to a x square dx. So, this is uh, a cube by 3 I believe yes and uh, similarly we can calculate the integral c 2 f dot dr. So, here y is varying from y is varying from uh, 0 to b. So, I can write y is varying from 0 to b and then x square here x is a. So, x square plus y square so, I can write this as uh, a square plus y square times i minus 2 a y j and then dot product with d x i plus d y j. So, what will be d x? d x is 0 and uh, this one will be so 0 i plus this one is um, d y j. So, this one is d y j. And when we take the dot product, then this will be minus of 2 a uh, y running from 0 to b uh, y d y. So, this is ultimately minus a b square. And uh, then similarly, if we integrate uh, c 3 f uh, along c 3 uh, f dot d r, then this will be basically um, again y equals to b and then dy is 0 and then we substitute uh, x running from a to 0 we reverse the and then we we reverse the minus sign you know, we, so since we are integrating a is a positive number so we um, cannot in, so it doesn't make much sense if you are integrating from a to 0 so it always has to be 0 to a so just do those uh, formula changes so what uh, what we will get is basically uh, this thing. So, we have uh, x running from a to 0, f is uh, our uh, y is b. So, this one will be x square plus b square. So, x square plus b square times i minus 2 x b j 2 x b j and then this will be d x i plus d y j. So, d x is uh, d x is uh, that one is fine and d y is 0. So, we can write d x i plus d y 0. So, when we integrate then this will ultimately give us or what we can do we first change the formula. So, this will be a x running from 0 to a and then we write the entire dot product. So, when we take the dot product this will be basically x square plus b square times d x because i i will be uh, gone. So, now we integrate this x square plus b square from uh, 0 to a and uh, similarly we integrate. So, similarly we integrate the curve uh, the function along the curve c 4 and then you sum them and ultimately we will obtain the answer. So, ultimately we will obtain the answer i let us say is equals to minus 2 a b square and this is the required answer. So, here in this case instead of having a one instead of having one smooth curve we basically had a, how to say a union of four smooth curves and uh, those four smooth curves actually um, needed to be evaluated. So, the basically the line integral along those four smooth curves needs to be evaluated separately. We cannot do C in whole, we have to do like C 1, then integral on C 2, then integral on C 3, then integral on C 4. So, sometimes you might come across um, examples where the where the area or sorry the curve is actually composed of a parabola and a straight line. So, you basically have to divide your integral into uh, two sub integrals. So, you first have to integrate along that parabola and then integrate along that straight line. All right.
So that is something um, I wanted to uh, show you. So of course, there are examples like that. And uh, due to time constraints, uh, we have to finish this course on time. So uh, we will move on to our um, our next topic, which is basically surface integral and uh, Green's theorem. So basically, what do we mean by surface integral? So let us assume that this is our surface S in uh, three-dimensional space. So I call it as S, and uh, uh, any integral and any integral any integral so it is like line integral definition so any integral which is to be evaluated which is to be evaluated over a surface say s is called a surface integral. So, basically what do we mean by is so there is a very nice theory going on at the back, but uh, we generally write it as in this way. So, we so when we are doing the surface integral we usually denote it as um, surface integral over s f dot n d s which can also be written as surface integral over s f dot d s. So, here what we actually mean is that this f dot n is the component of f along the normal n and uh, um, this d s. So, on the surface on the surface of this uh, on, the, on the surface of this uh, the, let us say the surface s we basically have this is our vector and this is our point p this is our vector f and this is our vector or the normal n. So, this f dot n is actually the normal component is the normal component of f at the point p and uh, if we and the, the integral of f dot n then over the surface s. So, this is the integral of the function f, f dot n over the surface s is given in this fashion. So, this is just like a notation. So, when you you can you will be given as let us say a vector function and then from there you have to calculate the normal n. So, that you can evaluate this um, surface integral f dot n d s all right. Now, when we evaluate the surface integral we have to remember certain ways that uh, how we can evaluate. So, this is of course, given this is of course, gi is given as an abstract definition that what do we mean by this component of f integral of component of f along the normal n um, um, over the surface s. But uh, when we need to evaluate this uh, uh, we, we need some kind of formula that will help us to evaluate. So, the formula is you have to take the projection of this surface either on x y plane or y z plane or z x plane. So, depending on your projection basically uh, your evaluation uh, will uh, depend. Uh, of course, the answer would remain same it is just that the complications or um, I do not know uh, the, the way you solve the problem will depend on um, on which plane you are taking the projection all right. So, here we have uh, f dot n. So, the first projection projection let us say we are projecting on uh, x y plane. So, then this will be surface integral over s f dot n d s which is surface integral over s f dot n d x d y divided by n dot k right f dot n d x d y divided by n dot k. So, this is what we get when we take the projection on first projection or projection on x y plane. Similarly, you can take the projection on the x z plane and uh, we can take the projection on y z plane.
f dot n sorry uh, x z. So, if we are taking the projection, so this has to be j and uh, when we are taking projection on y z plane, so this has to be i. So, the trick to on y z plane. So, the trick to remember these uh, formulas is that whenever you are taking projection on a certain plane, so that will be in the product d x d z and then the remaining axis. So, if you are taking the projection on x z plane, then basically y axis is perpendicular. So, you take uh, n dot j. So, j is the unit vector along the axis y. So, we take basically n dot j. Similarly, if you are taking the projection on x y plane, then your z plane is uh, then your z uh, axis is perpendicular to x x y plane and therefore, you take n dot k. And similarly, if we are taking um, y z plane, then x axis is perpendicular to a uh, y z plane and therefore, we take the projection uh, we take the product as n dot i. So, it is a very nice and convenient way to remember these formulas all right. So, now we will see how we can solve some examples. So, this is of course, a given in a bit uh, abstract way uh, we will see how we can work out an example. So, let us start all right. So, to begin with So, evaluate f dot n d s where our function f x y z is y z i plus z x j plus x y k where s is the part of the of the surface of the sphere x square plus y square plus z square equals to 1, which is which is in the first octant in the first octant. So, here in this example what we have is uh, we have a given vector function f and uh, here we have to calculate the surface integral f dot n d s and uh, our surface along which we have to integrate basically or on which we have to integrate uh, is given by x square plus y square plus z square equals to 1. However, there is a small cast that we have to just consider a surface that is in the first octant. So, if you consider let us say a circle in 2 D then it actually has a uh, 4 um, how to say quadrants. So, and in case of a sphere since it is a 3 dimensional ge uh, geometry you will have actually 8 octants and uh, we have to limit to the just the first octant all right. So, let us start. So, first of all um, if we want to calculate f dot n we have to find out n what is our n and uh, unless you calculate this n uh, we cannot proceed any further. But um, we remember from the uh, from the uh, gra gradient divergence and curl that gradient of a function or the gradient of a uh, uh, of a given uh, let's say you have a you have the equation of a of a surface then the gradient of that 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 f equals to that surface is basically a normal to the surface so the gradient of f is actually a normal to the curve f is equals to some constant or f equals to zero. So, basically a vector normal to the surface s is given by s equals to gradient of uh, I do not know phi where 
pi x y z equals to x square plus y square plus z square minus 1 right. So, this is the required equation of the or uh, basically uh, phi is equals to x square plus y square uh, plus z square equals to minus 1. So, now uh, and we do not have to write s here. So, a vector normal to the surface s is given by grad phi and uh, this grad phi can be calculated now. So, grad of x square plus y square plus z square minus 1. So, this is basically 2 times x i y z z k. All right. So, we take the gradient and that is what we obtain. Now, this is normal to the surface s, but n is the unit outward drawn normal. However, gradient of phi is just the outward drawn normal. So, we have to now calculate n cap. So, to calculate n cap a unit normal therefore, a unit normal a unit normal to any point to a unit point to 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 any point actually. So, a unit normal to any point uh, x y z is basically n equals to grad phi divided by gradient of phi. So, grad phi is 2 times uh, x i y j plus z k and when we take square. So, this is basically 2 times um, So, 2 times x square plus y square plus z square. Now, x square plus y square plus z square is 1. So, this is basically x i plus y j plus z k. So, that is our normal n and now we will take projection on x y plane. So, if we take the projection on x y plane. So, this is our plane y and that is the first octant r because if you take the projection of first octant in the sphere, the if you take the projection on x y plane, then it will be a circle in the first octant. So, taking projection and uh, of course, um, a, a vector perpendicular to a vector perpendicular to uh, this x y plane is the k axis right. All right. So, taking projection taking projection of s into the x y plane. So, taking projection of s into the x y plane gives, um, so this is basically uh, our unit normal and now taking projection of s into x y plane, it will be basically So, our f is y z i plus z x j plus x y k y z i plus z x j plus x y k dot product with d x y d d x y d i divided by n dot k. So, first of all here I will write our normal which is uh, x y y j plus z k and d d and this one is basically. Uh, so, we have n and uh, we have f and now d s is basically d x d y divided by n dot k right. So, um, here in this case uh, what we will obtain is n dot k. So, this is nothing but, so r is basically the, um, r is basically our 
after projection the new uh, the new area basically or the new place where we are doing the integration and uh, here in this case uh, if our n is um, uh, n is k basically so n is the unit normal uh, perpendicular to so n is the unit normal and uh, k is the given uh, k is the k is the vector perpendicular to xy plane so if you take n dot k then this will reduce to uh, this will reduce to just z. So, from here what we have is uh, f dot n is if you break the dot product then this will be uh, 3 x y z and uh, k will be uh, n dot k will be basically uh, n dot k will be basically z right and uh, therefore, if I substitute everything here then surface integral f dot n d s is equals to integral over r 3 uh, x y z and uh, then times this is basically times it is not a cross product d x d y and n dot k is again z. So, this whole thing will reduce to integral over r 3 x y d x dy right and now what we will do is uh, we substitute uh, since we are in the three uh, in two dimensional geometry and it is basically uh, sort of like a surface in, uh, this uh, integral uh, in the in the circle uh, r uh, this whatever you want to call we basically substitute x equals to uh, let us say uh, small r cos theta and y equals to small r sin theta. So, basically we substitute we substitute substitute x equals to r cos theta y equals to r sin theta and therefore, the required line integral uh, sorry the required surface integral let us say I am calling it as i s equals to sorry equals to uh, I have uh, r running from 0 to 1 because it is of uh, unit uh, uh, unit radius and theta since we are in the first octant then theta uh, first quadrant then theta will run from 0 to pi by 2. So, that I am writing here and then I have 3, 3 is here x. So, x is uh, so this is x, x is r cos theta. So, 3 uh, r cos theta and uh, times this one is y, y is r sin theta right. So, y is r sin theta and everything is transferred to spherical uh, sorry polar coordinate system. So, we have r dr d theta. So, if you multiply this whole thing and take the term for r on one side. So, this is r running from 0 to 1 this will be r cube dr and this one will be, th will be theta running from 0 to pi by 2 uh, sin theta cos theta d theta. So, we integrate this thing here and then we integrate this thing here and this will give us uh, 3 by 4 times half. So, this is ultimately 3 by 8. So, we are just uh, half with uh, 2 here and then we do sin 2 theta and all that. So, this is the required answer. So, in this case uh, we basically have to find out the projection of the of the surface on a certain plane and just having to know the, the projection you can be able to solve the rest of the example. We will uh, solve some more examples on surface integral in our next class just to make the concept clear and uh, then we will move on to volume integral. So, I will stop here for today and uh, we will continue with our uh, examples on surface integral in our next class. Thank you.